Rebecca Azor is in the house You know she got a funny story to tell Talking politics, culture, a real life-ish uh, I live in life in the ATL Benjamin, yeah, that's my man He's always coming up with the master plan Politics scheming, I'm trying to find the meaning of life And while the feds keeps us in strife I'm your DJ I really don't need no introduction right now But you know what? I stay dropping them jams Y'all know who I am Good hope, dad jokes, culture is politics. What you're hearing right now was the culmination of all of this. I started out with the mic in my hand, and I graduated to a plethora of fans. I love bringing joy to the people. It makes me feel great, makes me feel regal. I do what I do for you. 8 p.m. Friday, you know how we do. Let's go. It's time for like it or not. We're back to us. Let's start this damn show. Like it or not, y'all. 2023. Let's start this damn show. Let's go. Like it or not, starts now. Hello. Look at that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We kind of coordinating. Yeah, just a little bit. Good morning. Look at that. Okay. Stick, though. Ugly. Uh. <laughs> Make sure you grab that. We don't want to be chapped on like the no. okay? like, uh-huh, top. We, 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 we won't be chapped. Mm. Okay. okay? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anyways, welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. Hey, Bubba, tell the people where you've been. They've been looking for you. Missed you brother. It's been like 17 years since we've started. What happened? 2024 happened. That's what happened. Okay. <laughs> oh. Y'all hear it still. <coughs> oh, man. Mm. Bronchitis, and then Q got sick with food poisoning. It's just, 2024 is starting in February for me. So it's I'm still in 2023 because oh, wow. the way this stuff been starting right now. No. No. no, no, no. I don't claim that for you. I'm mm. going to tell you that you're not in, you're no longer in 2023, my brother. I understand <laughs> that the beginning of the year may have started. Hey, I know because I was there. The beginning of the year may have started confusing. Mm. It may have not felt like what a new year should feel like. And a lot of people think it's, Mm. oh my goodness, hey, we've transferred into another year. I mean, we went from the 31st to the 1st. Now I'm going to start doing those resolutions. Things are going to start kicking in for me. I'm going to start fear that And don't ever speak on that. I know that a few years ago, maybe I'll say about a decade ago, it was cute to say, oh, uh, 2023 done started off. I mean, 2024 done already started off bad. Uh, 2025 going to be my year. Yours, I know it's a joke, but your spirit doesn't understand the difference. Come on. Mm. Okay? So you got to start speaking life into yourself. Just because the January started a little stuck, I get it. A lot of us felt that way. Stuck. I know that we got 11 more months in this year. You can't say just because January started the way it did that the rest of your year is going to be like that. Come on now. Oh, no. It's just January. Okay. I'm just yeah. waiting for January to get the hell yeah. on that way. Uh-huh. But but we, is, and we can't say that, we're, that 2023 remnants of it is here because the 2024 started and you have been blessed to experience it and may not have been what you wanted it to look like. But, baby, let me tell you something. February... She she, February okay. is going to do something for you. And I, I just want everybody to touch and agree. Come on, February for everybody out. on the show is going to do something. Everybody's going to have a good story to tell mm. on next month. I promise you that. I okay. Amen. I re- I re- accept it, receive it, and Amen. anticipate it. Amen. Mm-hmm. And everybody Amen. who's watching, hey, that was for you. If you was watching live, hey, <laughs> it's over. You just, you just, you just, okay. It's over. Okay. You, you just got that right. Mm hmm. It Amen. still sucked though. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It's not, that you, you know. it's not that you can't say it sucked. I, you can literally acknowledge it, but say that's not going to be my experience for 2024. It's mm-hmm. not. Okay? 
Come on, somebody. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That's right. Hey, hey. You know <laughs> what? I'm rebuke in the name of Jesus, Rebecca. You know, I, I just be hijacking your show. You really time. do. That's okay. <laughs> and I love this it. This is gonna be the last time. I told you next month ain't gonna be the same. No, this was this. Was, <laughs> wait, wait. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hijack no. one more time. <laughs> then who is rebuke? I rebuke white supremacy in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Everything I don't know. this this civil war they're trying to start at the border of Texas in the mm. name of Jesus. You white Christian nationalist devils, you cannot have our peace. We will not have war in this country. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know we bind it up and we 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 bind it up and we send it back to where it came hell, from because white the, let me tell you nationalist. That's right. Devil. So what's going? So what's going on over there on the border? They still they at the border because they've been at the border. Republican That's... governors have sent mm -hmm. their national guards, men and women, and gender nonconforming individuals. They've sent troops to Texas to protect Texas from the invasion of the illegals. Same time, they're inflaming on their platforms, calling for civil war. Calling for their provoc they're provoking uh, Joe Biden to cause a confrontation. They really want to see federal troops go head to head with 25. That's half the nation. The Confederacy has grown since the last time it was here. I wow. rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Oh no, it's shot to hell. Let me tell you because. Mm. They're still doing what they've done, right? What we've seen on camera and what they wanted us to believe that Texas wasn't doing, that other borders weren't doing to immigrants, to migrants, to asylum Come seekers. Uh, mm. They they definitely want, I mean, we Come saw, on. I always, and I keep bringing back 2020. I think that's for people who haven't experienced 2020, like, you know, and no, the, I, people who haven't experienced the, the really yeah, the baby, yeah. okay? The baby. Everybody else right. forgot right. though. I think people forgot. I feel like it's a forgetful I, so I, I want to remind you. Let me take it back mm. real quick. Sometimes we got to go into remembrance, right? And mm. let me take it back to you for you real quick. Remember in 2020, and I believe it was like at the end of 2020, 2021. It was September. I remember it was a cold. No, it was a it was it was a day in September. And I remember those Haitians were under that bridge. Haitians and a few Mexicans, mm. and but there, right, there was right. there was majority Haitians. Haitians under that bridge. And 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 what Texas did as we saw them on horsemen, <laughs> and mm. uh, they were slanging whips, um, and we saw it. Hey hey hey, we seen it on camera live. Okay. With them people jumping in the water from across the way to try to make it to the other side to see if they can be asylum seekers, if America can can consider them for a better life and what was going on in Haiti. Let me remind you what was going on in Haiti, what is currently happening in Haiti, uh, but isn't all of Haiti. I want to make sure I, I put that out there as well. But uh, they were in war. Their president was assassinated. just assassinated. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were having the war in the streets amongst gangs and the, um, and the government themselves. And sometimes it was gangs and government against people. Okay? So all of that, no structure in some of the towns there, and people were fighting just to leave for their kids to have a better life. Earthquakes, hurricanes, they, all of that was happening. Uh -huh. And they said that there was no dire need. They said, they being America, that there was no dire mm -hmm. need, and these people were bringing in, um, they were they wanted to put it under the guise of COVID. Yes. Remember, Donald Ooh. Trump at the time, I don't yeah, talk about that. Donald Trump at the time said, and, and then you know who picked it up too? Uh, uh, um, our, our current president, Biden, Donald Trump at the time before was like, no, they can't come here. Uh, it was title, like you said, title 42. Uh, and, uh, they were saying that, Hey, we can't and title 42 under Donald Trump who used under an, a previous president years before who util utilized it as well, but mm -hmm. said that I'm going to use this Donald Trump so that these Haitians can't come in title 42 will pre prevent them from coming in because We'll say it's COVID under the guise of COVID being an issue and we can't allow them to try to bring disease onto to Rebecca, to our can I interrupt just Mind to you. say, David, I dropped a link. Yes, I dropped a link in a chat with uh images to remind folks of what these Jim Crow crackers did to the Haitians at the Texas border, for which 25 Republican governors are forget. getting ready to send Never over, or they are sending over their troops. The South is rising again, and what they're doing to migrants at the border reflects in what they do to black people in the border by virtue of what you're talking about, mm. Rebecca. 
Yes, and 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 we're, again, we're in remembrance. I want you guys to remember because you're right, Ben. They have also, you know, quickly we forget. And so, with the Title Forty Two, Joe Biden also Joe. grabbed yeah. on to Title Forty Two to make sure that the Haitians who wanted to come under and uh, the we, the Haitians call it Joe Biden program, uh, pro, program Joe Biden. Program Biden. So they were like, we want to get under here. We want to Biden is president now. We're going to get here. We're going to make he made sure he tapped in the title 42 for them, too. But and, and this is not to say that the people of Ukraine did not That's deserve right. to also seek their freedom and asylum from what what is happening over there. But they literally title 42 was still there, but title 42 didn't affect the Ukrainians. This is where I want to make it clear. Black migrants, black immigrants, black people will always be at the bottom of the totem pole, totem pole, no matter what the evidence says, Hey, this is injustice and this is prejudice and this is racist. How come this isn't affecting the same person, the same, this, this country right here, who's going through the same issues as us. The only difference is I'm black. Mm -hmm. We're a black country. Mm -hmm. So this is what Texas makes sure that they lean into and their southern draw, and they make sure they lean mm. right on into it, and make sure they they're 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 Ted cruising this Greg thing. Atkinson, um, yeah, they Greg make Atkinson. sure yeah. that they 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 keep it nice and white and evangelical, even though that's what they say they believe. They do not move in that manner because Jesus would have took them people right over come, the water, gave them bread, on. gave them Fish. water, made sure they found housing, they water figured it all out come for on. them. <laughs> Okay, mm. it would have been done. The fish would have been they listen, and then patients would have assisted in it because they are prepared what for those moments. What is it? Soup jumu. Now that's this is our money. Mm -hmm. If you haven't had it, but I mean, we would have been definitely breaking bread, teaching y'all the good recipes, how to properly clean your meat. <laughs> how to properly gut that fish. How to properly wash your legs. But yes, man, continue. No, 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 no that's why I appreciate you so much, and I yield. I've done. I've said you. I knew that all I had to do was say <laughs> Texas border, and you was going to immediately connect the dots to what these people did to black folks at the border, and why black yeah. folks should one hundred percent stand in solidarity with immigrants and migrants all over the world because the reason they are immigrants and migrants, the same reason Haiti is going through because the United States foreign policy disrupts and destabilizes every single one of these nations. Yes, and they sir. have no choice but to leave the violence that the United States helped create and come to the United States of America mm -hmm. only to get to the border and be treated like animals. Now, Rebecca, there's another nuance that you knew about and you talked about years ago when you saw this video. Speak to these Haitians receiving flyers telling them that they should come to the United States mm -hmm. of America over in their mm -hmm. foreign land. Somebody was pushing mm -hmm. them there. Yes. So they were receiving these uh, saying that, hey, um, Program Biden Kunya. So they're saying like the, the program is open now. I'll search I'll go go find uh, a person you know that can get you um papers, and then all you need is the qualifying papers. All you need to do is make it to the border. And once you get to the border, they will be able because of law to take you in. They're doing this with other migrants. Who they who those migrants were were whites mm. and or mm. or, or, or non-black migrants so they were accepting them so they they got this word in their foreign land and because of what they were going through i can't they did and so many if you look at so many um videos from that time so many of them said i do not want to leave my land do you think i want to leave my country and go on no i need to do this for my that's right. child that's right okay i need to do this for my child so what they were doing was um, sending them that they, people were getting their passports, waiting for their passports. The program was actually very quick. When Biden's administration seen the numbers and how quick it was going, they made the process difficult. They changed it up as these people's feet touched the ground. They overnight, when they got under that bridge, because remember, I am directly connected to what was going on. Yeah. Not only were we giving to the people, you were getting remember, information uh, from you know, the, the, our channel mm -hmm. helped with that. My cousin was underneath that bridge, called me. I was supposed to go pick him up. <laughs> Okay. No and then the, the I talked to the, the white woman lawyer because it's always a white woman Lord. missionary lawyer. I talked Somewhere. to her uh -huh. and she said to me, I don't know what it is that's making it so hard for the Haitians, but I've never seen anything like it 
in my life and I've been doing this job for years for migrants at the border, for asylum seekers at the border. And she said, I don't know why it's so difficult for Haitians. I haven't seen it like this. And so I can't, I can't protect them. Mm. So if you can try to come and get them. And that night, that woman told me that I was shook. I talked to my cousin. He said, please, please, they're coming. I see them in the night and they're taking people. Mm. And please. the next morning, Rebecca, they cleared out that entire bridge. It, it was they not cleared a it out. Like, no Nobody mm -hmm. we couldn't find a person. They didn't give us information. They took those migrants and they threw them on a plane and they put them in an area where they're not even from in Haiti. They dropped them off and told them to figure it out. How One to last home. detail, Rebecca, because if my memory serves me correctly and correct me if I'm wrong, but from a detail from your cousin was that the flyer they received was not a, actually a part of a real program. It was simply no, an somebody, advertisement used to push as many migrants to the border as they could. Did I remember yes, that correctly? Yes. Oh, yes. They believed. They got... They literally were told this online, even. They were sending them this on WhatsApp. Mm. Okay. WhatsApp. Mm. I said it with an accent, but they were sending them this on <laughs> WhatsApp. And they were literally telling them, This, you got to do this. My mother was sending it to me. My brother was sending it to me. My cousins were hitting me up. You know, Allo, Kous, yo di que suge on moon, aux Etats-Unis. If you have somebody, oh, well, hey, cousin, hey, if you have somebody in the United States that said that we can come, all we need to do is get to the border and you'll pick us up. And the whole time Biden administration was working on diminishing little bits of that to make sure it didn't go down like that. So why did they need them to go to the border? Do you understand the tra the traveling that they had yes. to do? They had to go to Brazil for what reason? They had to go to Mexico for what reason? They had to go to Chile for what reason? To get to Give Texas. that geographical outlay of how like, they had to like, Do you guys understand that? That made no Some sense. Some people didn't make it on Come the on. route. They were running into gangs. Some people didn't make it on the route. Only to get there. If you, and, and to find out that they have been deceived and sent there for this exact, as you see, this is my thesis. This is my hypothesis, Rebecca. Somebody understood that they can use the desperation of the Haitian people and what's going on with the gangs and the assassination of the president. And they sent out fake flyers and information pushing as many Haitians as they could to the border. Do, and, and now, if you would remember 2020, because the same exact language they're using now against Mexican or whatever, Guad wherever they're coming from at the border, they're dehumanizing them and using the same tactic, the same scare tactics that got these, these officers. Look at these slave drivers. Look at them. Look at them, how they treat in Haitians. But now they've escalated. Four years later, they are at the border with 25 Republican governors, National Guards. James, they they, they really seriously trying to start a second civil war. Literally, that's what that is. And that's ridiculous. And Ben, I, I kind of feel where you were going on this. It, it feel like it was, oh, this is kind of yes. sad. Because what where where did all those lines come from? Who put that information out Who, there? Right there? Because it was working for um a certain uh, people and the the white migrants who were coming here yep. or the the non black migrants who oh. were coming here for whatever reason. So what they did was say, hey, this is working for them, and there's nothing in here that specifies black or white uh -huh. or non black migrants. So it's working for them. This is actually oh, the no, law that's no. happening in, in America, in the United States. So do this. So they were and mind you. Some of these people were giving their lives. Their, their lives. Mm -hmm. Some of them lost their oh, children man. on the way. Some of them had to cross over into the DR because they were, these are people that were under the bridge. And if people don't know what the DR is, it's the Dominican Republic. We sh we're, we're the same island. We're just split up they, they by a little, anyway, I'm sorry. Little, little wall. Yeah. 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 So we thought, so people that went back, just went to the DR, went to Chile, um, and they're not treated the best in Chile either, but it's a better life than what they've had, right? And when they went to the DR, again, we are neighboring uh, island countries, which is really the same island, uh, just um, dominated by different colonizers. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And so with that being said, a lot of us Haitians, uh, and, and I have family members who live in the DR, but the disrespect, when I went to visit, I know that as Haitians, they, you know, you're not supposed to go visit, but I got family there. And when I went to visit uh, 2020, I believe, 2021, the way that I saw 
what I seen. I seen it with my eyes. I have video. I just didn't want to put it out because it was, you know, what people were afraid. They were like, please don't put yeah. me out there because they'll find me where I am. And what I seen how Dominicans themselves, the Dominican government, how they treated us when they pulled us over and said, give me money and we'll let you go. We know you guys are Haitian. Give me money and we'll let you go. And we're like, first of all, we have family here, all those things. We're creating business here, these things. They're like, so what? We're pulling you over for no reason, but we just know you're Haitian. So give us money and we'll let you go. These are the people that are supposed to be. The treatment of black migrants. And mind you, I don't know why they don't understand that they're black over there too. Hey, I don't know. Hey, that's not my business. But I will say the treatment of black migrants. We saw that with Ukraine. The black migrants that were coming from Ukraine, Ukraine. They were treated the worst. They were questioned on if they were really Ukrainian. Yeah. Wow. Just because they had African ancestry. Just because their parents were migrants from another country that came there for a better life. Now that that country is 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 going under right now for whatever reason because they look different, talk different. Same situation, but they because they're white, they get the opportunity to get a little bit of a red carpet rollout for them mm-hmm. when they come to America. America mm-hmm. never gave us the reason why Title 42 only stuck with the black migrants, but never with the others. Well, never gave us. I mean, reason. unfortunately, right. Title 42 with, with, with the good old days, you know, because now they now they now they really white supremacy is so destructive, man, that they they are at the border talking about going to war just to make sure that they can get rid of migrants when this country was built on it, like they didn't behave like this when Ellis, Ellis mm. Island was open and all of their grandparents came through here. But as soon as black folks start coming, they start losing it, they, they, excuse me, their mind. They lost their minds. Now they're willing yes. to go to civil war over it. Um, and they want it. They're lusting after it. They're, they're, they're devils. I'm but sorry. Is that not the American way? Because at the end of the day, Period. what Americans have been doing historically, and I have to remind, you know, again, we are, I guess that's the theme of this show, remembrance. remembrance. And I feel like I have to remind a lot of times, I just feel like people want us to just get past the fact that 2020 happened. 2020, it wasn't only COVID, we had to go through, so we had to endure so much. We had to be reminded of other things too. We were in a fight for our lives. We were in the fight for other humanity, for black migrants' lives. We were in the fight for black people's lives here, just locally, couldn't go to the store, having knees to the neck. It was, we were literally just in the house with your man and getting bullets through the wall. Your, Your life being lost and just because you are a black woman. Now you are at the mm. bottom of the bottom of the bottom total pole. And we had to make that such a big thing. We had to make your name something that people had to see in life. That's right. Hmm. Just to make it something. Black, right now in 2020, a lot of corporations thought putting watermelons on a candle, setting up the lunch little place in oh, Ikea. Yeah. And making it so <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they thought holding the door for you when you walked into the grocery you store. Remember this, James? <laughs> <laughs> what was on the recipe? It sounded you good, but I ain't gonna lie to because we covered it. Yeah, the I man, the recipe it was good. Was off the I was but it was also disrespectful <laughs> because what we it's needed was actually, we didn't need <laughs> our black representation to come out of the woodworks in the Biden administration, sit up here and tell us that we did not have racism and then turn around and sign mm. up on, on an a anti-Asian on. hate bill and then turn around and not sign anything that helped protect hey, What do we get American out of it, Rebecca? Time. We got a menu at Ikea. We got watermelon yeah. and fried chicken. <laughs> Yes, and then is. we also get the uh whole administration in the rotondo doing the, with, the, with the, the, the kente cloth, cloth on, and it <laughs> was kneeling? that my god, y'all get the did, picture, David. Did all of this happen? Yes, it did. Jesus I, Christ, we, and we, got, we, got, we, had, we had white people making music on TikTok. <laughs> Remember talking about you know, like using our songs to do. <sighs> Let's oh, not forget. Oh, Lord, no, my God. My, my, um, but now, <laughs> you're saying, oh, my God, that was in 2020. That feels like it was yesterday, but it was so long ago. Yeah, For right. us who are experiencing that or who have experienced that, we who had got nothing from that time, remember, all of these huge companies had started to tap into their diversity. Hey, <laughs> for our listening audience at this particular moment, head over to, to YouTube and check out what we just saw. Um, 
For, uh, listen, we shall over and, and got not the one kneeling, single reform. The Congress, listen, the, the Black one. Caucus allowing these things to happen because it's it, it gave some kind of a look in the time mm -hmm. we thought that that was it's almost like when they when they say bipartisanship right so in that time we needed something to look together but as soon remember they were giving us work from home mm. um they yeah. diversity inclusion we were getting jobs that we could never get and i'm talking about black folks we yeah. were getting jobs because white folks said oh my god covid i am not doing that i'm going to get 3 booster shots and i'm gonna go home to my safe. kids and that's yeah. it and black people were like well there's a vacancy here hey i've always been qualified can i get the job they were like you're hired <laughs> remember they were hired black everybody and last year every group netflix said to hell <laughs> with y'all black every single one of y'all niggas canceled canceled. Netflix, no, that's not really here. Twitter <laughs> said no longer. We are changing. I know what we said when we started. We said, you know, black folks don't have black Twitter gonna have black Twitter black gonna Twitter do. Don't even exist. They said no get more. up out of here. So hard. They said all of that black content that we was doing on the internet and on these subscriptions and, and, and services, take it off. <laughs> get it off of there right the, now. The, the whole Black Lives Matter section on no. any of these platforms. Get out of there. We don't no. want to. We don't want to see that one. I mean, that was so 2020. Mm -hmm. that was, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, well, now, now it's reverse racism, and Tucker Carlson has said that J George Floyd didn't really die from the knee to the neck. Right? Now, now they're, re they're 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 rewriting history to change mm -hmm. our remembrance, oh, yeah. Rebecca. But please speak okay. on the necessity of remembrance. Okay. We must keep going back in time and grabbing it. And I know that at some point it does get uncomfortable, but the fact that it's still happening, y'all, they, I know we make, again, another joke that is actually serious. We are waking up and when we turn back the time, they'd be like, oh, we don't turn back the time 400 years. No, we're actually doing that right now. Mm -hmm. They done did so much progress in 2020 just to say black lives matter. We said it, we did it. We, we our company believes and. Remember the person that they remember, hey, right there, Jesus. Remember when they shut down Starbucks? <laughs> oh, when they yes. shut down Starbucks and they did that diversity and inclusion Come training on. because of the racism <laughs> yeah. uh, that Starbucks yeah. did to, to someone there. Listen, let me, you, let me tell you what happened. That person now has received millions of dollars in this day of, of our of, uh, in year of our Lord 2024. On uh -huh. Cat Williams Internet, this, this news broke. <laughs> And stated that that person actually was uh, 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 there was racism or something against them. So now they got money for their grievances oh, wait, wait, in that wait, moment. Wait. Yeah, the person that the person that did all that stuff. Young black of, men who were arrested at Starbucks. When they no, I'm talking about mm -mm. At, at, at over there at Starbucks when they shut it down because of the uh, uh, um, uh, Starbucks person being racist to somebody. Remember that? Yeah. Now that person has gotten money instead of remember when everybody was like, that's right, Starbucks is doing a great thing. The yeah, person that they okay. were talking about that did the incident, that they did the racism, money. that did the prejudice, that did all that, they oh, got yeah, money. Yeah, no, they're mad for their, a whole lot of for their problems. Yeah, that, for their that's hurt. just like Ed Bloom. Listen, uh, let's let's pause for a second. I just want to say if you haven't hit the like, share, and subscribe button, we are high key, the dopest yeah, and like, the most precise and <laughs> academically, like I mean, Rebecca is spitting some stuff, but watch this. Rebecca, what you're talking about is the Ed Bloom phenomenon. That's the white dude mm -hmm. who's going to the mm -hmm. Supreme Court to uh, get rid of affirmative action using that same structured argument, reverse mm -hmm. racism, right? Uh, it's yeah. the same thing that they're doing to get rid of diversity and inclusion. It's the same thing that they're okay. using to undermine uh, black people generally, but black women specifically to say that that okay. all of the all of them are there as a as a handout. They're not qualified. It's reverse racism. So that's how yes, that yes. The, the person you're talking about, if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like that's how they were able to get rewarded for their racism. Did I hear you correct? Yeah. Mm. No, you, you heard it perfectly. And Ben, that brings me into the story that I actually wanted to cover. Um, there is a woman and we're going to we're going to talk about it right now. Thank you so much. Her name is Arian Simone, mm. uh, Florida A&M &A graduate, uh, also somebody who is a CEO and an investor of something that they call the Fearless Fund, which allows a lot of black companies, black women, black uh, startup businesses like this one um, to be funded 
right? Um, and and they they specifically go to black people. This story has been going on, and she's been doing this for years. This story has been going on for about uh, a few months at the end of last year. Uh, and let me go ahead and grab that story because I, I believe that this is important. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it's been, not a lot of people are talking about it, but it was a lawsuit filed mm -hmm. against uh, the fearless wow. fund. And this is a part of, this is an Atlanta um, based fund, but it claims that the firm violated the Civil Rights oh, hey, hey. Act. Uh, Ayanna Pearsons mm -hmm. and Arian Simone of the Fearless Fund, uh, they, they, they're they the ones that are being, being attacked. So for months, the Atlanta-based Black-owned and women-led venture capital firm uh, has faced a lawsuit. The conservative nonprofit Amer American Alliance for Equal Rights filed the suit against them. Listen, I want you American guys to listen. American Alliance for Equal Rights. Mm -hmm. The, the American Alliance for Equal Rights filed the suit against the firm in August saying that Fearless Fund's $20,000 grant program, Fearless Strivers Grant Contest, violates the Civil Rights Act of 1866. This all comes at a time when data shows Black business owners and Black entrepreneurs across the country face many unique challenges, including System, systemic racism, a lack of access to venture capital funds, barriers to accessing support services, and networking opportunities. Okay, this is all why this capital fund exists and inequitable access to business education. According to uh, Crunchbase, black women founders receive less than 1% of all venture capital funding. And back in November, um, the Closer Look show host, um, Scott talked with uh, Mirtha, somebody, and the person was really reporting that this is an issue for all black women. I say this to say, Somebody decided, I think it was a non-Black person, to go ahead and take this person to court, Arian Simone, because they felt like her <clears throat> venture capital fund discluded mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I know who that somebody is, but it go ahead, set it up, and then we'll knock it down. Yeah, okay, so yeah, you could break it down in that case. It discluded them. And so through all this time, and I'm going to get you a clip of her just kind of speaking about it with... um. I don't know why, but she was speaking with um, <clears throat> T.I. And she just goes into it. But she, this is something that is literally had to be taken to the feds. Like this, they, they made it such a big issue. And it's been, it's been on CNN. It's been on, but I haven't seen many black people, black, like media covering this story and why it's very important. They're trying to attack. And we know this because there are different, people are upset that black people are getting special funding to go to schools like Harvard hmm. to go to even, I, I understand when they, we got the first uh, generation uh, uh, grants, why we have those. I understand why we have those because all of these, any of these grants that are specific to black people, why is it a problem? You And they're like, no, white people should be able to get it too. They want to make it such an issue. Uh, and I dropped the link um, in, 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 our, in, our, in our text messages, but um, they want to make the specific issue. They said that she is racist for doing this, for specifying that this particular fund Child. only goes to black people, yet she created it. The whole sole purpose of this funding was so that it went to black underserved business women with small businesses, small startups, people who are looking to push their products out there. And this is where we are with that. Ben, what do you have on Stephen it? Miller, uh, former special assistant to President Donald Trump, uh, former President Donald Trump has an organization called American First Legal, which he is using to solicit more cases like this. Stephen Miller is the one that's uh, a part of the lawsuit against the Fearless Fund. Uh, David, I don't know if you were able to get that clip that quick, but I just want people to be reminded of who Stephen Miller is. Um, I actually do want you to look at what he looks like because he is such a manifestation of propaganda and evil that he manages to be uh, I believe he's of Jewish descent, but he reminds me so much more of Goebbels, the propagandist for uh, Adolf Hitler. Um, take If we have that video and we have that clip, I want everyone to be reminded of the game that white men are currently playing in order to protect themselves from having to play on an equal playing field with black people. And they're starting, and I do want to make this distinction, David's still looking at it, um, 
they're, they're starting with black women first though, Rebecca, like they, they come after black men every now and then, but they are hugely coming after black women first and foremost, because of course there's some patriarchy at play. You can get a couple of black men to go along with this if they're attacking black women first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Run that clip, David. Talk about remembering. If you or a loved one were denied a job, raise, promotion, or professional opportunity, as a result of diversity quotas, equity mandates, affirmative action, or other racial preferences, we want to hear from you. Please call us at 1-877-AFL-5454 or go to AF Legal. If you there you go. That's the that's he's one of the people doing and behind these lawsuits. Ed Bloom is another one. He's the one that took it to the, the Supreme Court. He had a couple of model minority uh, Asians who signed up with him to go and destroy affirmative action. But it just really speaks to what you outlined here this morning. Right. The, the technique that they use, they use it in diversity and inclusion attacks. They use it at the border. It's the difference between why white uh migrants were able to get here and still can get here and they treat black and brown migrants at the border they're ready to go to civil war over it it's because of the spoiled men children like uh uh this guy on your screen stephen miller yeah no and that and this is my problem <laughs> is that people are screaming and yelling um that this is racism and reverse racism I, baller alert He's putting out these dang old noms and woms, and they keep putting these people out to have discussions about things. And one of the things that they talked about was basically, oh, you know what I'm saying? A white man could go around and say, hey, they go that black person. And I don't even know who the person is that was saying this, but this, I don't know why I'm doing this accent, but just follow me here. <laughs> Like go do that, whatever or whatnot. I was okay. But people don't really understand because this is such a, a a pivotal moment, right? This is why, wow, right? When the rest of the people on on, on the um on the mics be like, oh, uh -huh. you said something there. Here we go. They said, but when a black person be like, hey, that go that white man, whatever, they don't even really notice that they doing the same thing. They was like, oh, oh man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, who said that though? Who made that argument? And I want to get on there and find it. It was recent. 11 11. Make sure y'all say a good prayer. But it, it was recent and I just can't. I can't remember. And it was somebody like what remember last time when I talked about the um the 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 the, the ATL Jacob being on there talking about the how yeah. why he did a baby mama. It was one of those people, but it was, it was somebody else. Podcast. I want to say it was, yes, it was the, the, the Baller Alert podcast. I want to say it was another producer who was having the conversation. And it's just like, hey, you know what I'm saying? When you really think about it, we out here doing the same racism or not. No. <laughs> Man, look, look, listen, can I just say something real quick, Rebecca? There, there is no <laughs> racial distinction to stupidity. There are plenty of stupid black people, just like mm. you see stupid make America great again, white folks, because you're going to always have some black <laughs> folks who think they got up on some, some revelatory link. Like they really thought they said something there. Black folks doing the same thing. If you believe in reverse racism, <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. then, then I, I invite you to go down to the border with us, right? Go down to the border and see exactly how far these Jim Crow will go with their races. I found it. Frito no Bang. Frito Bang is the person's name. Play. Oh, and I'm gonna, nobody. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to... Literally nobody. Just nobody. Drop nobody. This <laughs> in, in, um, and David, yes, I want you to play. I dropped it in our text message group. Um, this freedom because I want y'all to see what I'm talking about. People just sitting here being like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you think about that, think they deep. yeah, like you know what I'm saying? It don't even be they want to be deep, deep so bad. <laughs> it's problematic. But let me let's take a look at first Arian Simone, her conversation a little bit about what's going on and her breaking it down with T.I. on her okay, okay, um, new podcast. Uh, okay, yes, yes. I love a federal court case. Ooh, I know what that's like. Since I run the first venture capital fund mm -hmm. that is built by women of color for women of color. Okay. Um, What's wrong with that? Nothing. That's against the law? They made that against the law? Nothing. Okay. Well, yeah, something like that. They said they filed a suit against us using Section 1981 out of 1866 Civil Rights Act. Okay. And what that says is you can't basically mix race and contract. What the devil is busy? Come on. She goes, she continues on. Um, and 
and, 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 but she says um basically that she is in the federal court case. I want you guys to understand she is the first, she has the first venture venture capital that is ran by black women and for black women. Okay. I need you to understand that this is where it's problematic because you got these at home little ladies, you know what I'm saying? Do the ones that are like Bobart who just are white and can get positions um, and can get businesses who don't aren't qualified for anything, but people that work hard as hell since this girl was young and she comes from, she's never been like poor. She comes from a good family, a good upbringing. And she utilized that. And she also went to the number one HBCU in the nation, Florida A&M university, mm. but she utilized her upbringing, how she, you know, how a lot of great she was surrounded about around greatness, how she's come up in the game. She actually was a PR person for a lot of different people. Um, um, in the game and she she utilized all of that to make sure she can still keep black people on mm, 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 mm. and when they saw that she got to a place that was immaculate and to help other black Come women on. get to that space they said oh no she must be stopped mm. there is something wrong with this this is wrong I, I i know i felt the same way when i watched that uh documentary and movie on Billie Holiday, somebody who had such a beautiful voice. Uh, uh, yes, she had her issues, but somebody had such a beautiful voice and they, they just because she sang about our issues, she couldn't be deemed a great in jazz. Mm. She had to be deemed a federal extremist that needed to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's a little different now though, Rebecca, because I'm saying, because the white supremacists no, no, it's not different now. I'm kind of, let me start by saying I'm joking. Of course, they're still tracking us. They're still tracking black folks. They're tracking the, the protesters from Ferguson and Black Lives Matter. They're tracking them. Some of them are turning up dead. But what's so ironic right now in this moment is as they are tracking people like us and they're tracking Black Lives Matter and then they're tracking, uh, uh, like you said, Billie Holiday. And all of this is an extension of them protecting white supremacy. The funny thing is white mm -hmm. supremacy is what's at the border in, in Texas right now, getting ready to start the second civil war. And y'all worried about us black folks getting just just a little bit because because what what does what does this percentage of this black woman's contribution to uh, uh, venture capital represent in the whole total scheme of venture capital? Less than probably like huh. 0 0.05 percent of venture capital. But they saw that little bit of benefit for black folks, and they were like, "Oh, absolutely, the hell not! Get More it out of here! We can't allow Again, this to happen. Get it out of here! Get it out of here! Mm -hmm. Just like the, the, the uh, diversity and inclusion, it can't be in venture in venture capital. Get it out of mm -mm. here! It's black. Oh, this is, this is a reverse racism." Get it out of here. They're at the border. Get those... You said they're hot. They're black. Get them out of here. Let's move. Get those Let's jigaboos move. out of here. We don't do jigaboos. Rebecca said, here. don't give them a northern accent. You got to give them a southern accent. <laughs> We got to get, get those jigaboos out of here. We don't want them here. What do you mean diversity and inclusion? You can't get no Negroes, no 1% of <laughs> <laughs> Listen, honey, they said, and we're going to make it real Southern so they know what's up. Bring the whips, mm. bring the chains. The, 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 the chains, the, the, the shackles. The Texas whips being whipped on Haitians because she's not being. Go ahead, bring problem. the whips and bring the chains because mm. they're going to know what Southern what southern american people do <laughs> and it's quite quiet and it's quite right i said that on, on, on leftist mafia i said <laughs> if it's white it's right <laughs> that's what you need to know if it's white it's right they have brought that back in such a way i watch i can't i, I know social media it's a thing, but this is a thing that we're all trying to utilize right now to make money it's one of the easiest ways but who struggles the most in it i, I need my choir to come oh, on <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 James. James, why did both of us punch the heck out at the exact same moment? I'm reading comments over here. <laughs> me, me, I'm responding. Yes, yeah, just put something in the chat. It's <laughs> hey, not, not, not fair to you. No. Wait, we wait. missed the whole been on point and been all having church right. all morning. We should have been ready for you. You know who I know who in the chat? I know they was listening. My amen corner because they don't let me down. Um, but <laughs> set it up one more and, time. I promise you, you get it. Miss up one time. Like I was saying, in social the world. media, <laughs> this also applies in everything. Y'all gonna get sick of me, uh, me talking about the juxtaposition but even in social media we will see that the white is right concept goes with everything with venture capitalism with being at the border mm -hmm. with all of these things just like in social media we're doing something but who's at the bottom when it comes to us saying anything or doing anything 
on social media. This is the way that we, we, we try to make money. This is an easy way for mm. easier way for us to make money. But we're having to do 67 oh more God. jobs, partner with people, you know, who may not like it's God. doing all these things just to get a little bit of crumbs. But for some reason, I just see a white person saying the exact same things, doing the exact same things that they had to study us for, go Come to on. our pages for, figure out what is mm -hmm. trending about black people so they can say that their allies about Ooh. and get on their platforms and talk Come about this thing. Come and on. every, I don't know why, but right, white seems to be right because they see a white person talking about it. Come on. Or they see a white person mm. doing it. Or they see Rebecca. Let me let me take it from from here while you go change yeah. the battery. Because uh, we got two videos to that effect. We got a video of Ben Shapiro rapping, <laughs> James Ben Shapiro rapping, and we got uh, Lindsay, man, yeah. what are you no, is is that's what it's like. And then you have we have a video of Paula White. Uh, uh, and and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be careful <sighs> here because I do you know I'm a man of God. Uh, I do believe in the power of speaking in tongues. Y'all mess around with me, I'll start rebuking white supremacy in tongues. <laughs> But the video of her speaking in tongues, calling for African angels to come and save Donald Trump. Oh, that's oh, some yes. that's some uh, antichrist white supremacy stuff right there. But they are both reflections mm. of Rebecca is talking about how they would take what we do literally and just put whiteness on it yep. and, and make it worse. It's not even as good. It's not authentic. It's not. It's just white. And they will sell a million records and they will build an entire church like Paula White. I mean, mm -hmm. Paula White. Too much vibrata in the song, and they saying, "Ooh, that boy got soul." Mm -hmm. Too much vibrata mm -hmm. on the track. Mm -hmm. Somebody welcome to the cookout. No, the cookout <laughs> now is like God, we got raisins. <laughs> so I'm not going to that cookout. My mama said I can't even go to people's house anyway because of these kind of reasons. Now I'm sick because all these people at the cookout ain't clean their meals. <laughs> Rebecca, I want to play. I'm, 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 I'm gonna try something here because because uh, <laughs> I, 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 really want, I really want people to see, and I, we only have to listen to this long. But this is the crown jewel of white folks taking Oosh. from black ah. folks, but then weaponizing what they stole from us Four in braids. the first place against black folks. Here's Ben Shapiro uh, rapping, and like, who who's he with? Uh, I don't even know who this guy. He's supposed to be some kind of rapper. I guess he's popular uh, uh, amongst "Make America Great Again." Like they got their whole ecosystem. They're number one. Tom McDonald's. Tom Mac. Listen, they put out Nicki Minaj McDonald's. on iTunes, not on streaming, but on iTunes, which is like everybody's grandmama's platform. But they they beat out Mick, Nicki Minaj this week with this song. Mm. Well, we don't, I mean, like, well, yeah, we're talking listen. about Nikki. Let's take a listen. Maybe, I don't know if that's going to put my page down. I'll mute the hell out of it once I'm done with this, but let's take a listen. Please. I hope I offend you. I ask myself what I'm a band on. Let's just keep it real facts. Don't care how you feel, man. If you want my pronouns, I'm the man. I'm the man who don't respect Let's look at the stats. I've got the facts. My money like Lizzo. My pockets are fat. Homie, I'm epic. Don't be a whap. Dog, it's a yarmulke. Homie, no cap. Look at my charts. You're blowing money on strippers and cars. You go into prison, I'm on television. Dogs, no one knows who you are. Keep hating on me on the internet. My comment section all woke Karen's. And I make racks off compound interest. Y'all live with your parents. Nikki, take some notes. I just did this for fun. All my people, download this. Let's get a billboard number one. This ain't rap, this ain't money, cars and clothes. We ain't selling. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Let's just like break it down. Let me tell you first. I'm going to start just for a second. I'm not going to be before you long. Um, remember the hoodie that Trayvon yes. got killed right. for? Right. And they, and you know, there were, there was a certain, um, there were a couple of people that were saying because he had the hoodie on was problematic. And what we see here is ain't about money, cars, and clothes. It's ain't whatever. Yet you're taking the aesthetic of a black person that you guys deem to be evil, to be scary, to be thuggish. Um, and you're utilizing that to make a point that you, you haven't even stuck with. Um, also, the rap itself comes from... Folks. Blacks. Period. Point blank. Black originated people. with us. black culture. That is it. And here you are with four braids, four braids, and and a, a, a shaved head on the Look side. Like when he got he got a little pieces of grill. Trying to do a he fade. Got a little pieces of grill in his mouth. You know, what I mean? like I saw a little put of gold here and there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, he got gold yeah. in his teeth. Um, uh, <clears throat> he got like a little tattoo on the forehead that has never been. You know, that is something that. 
black it's literally cultural appropriation but this is the culture that you got that ben shapiro gets sits on his little his little thing about uh and he's literally bragging about i can create content and make so That's much right. money off of it right. while y'all while, while y'all sitting at broke. home and, going and to being jail. broke nikki take notes yeah nikki take notes nikki minaj um which we'll talk about further he, on in the show but he whole ass said nikki's yes. name like yeah, Nikki, take notes. I don't know what that's about when a lot of the right actually supports Nikki for comments that she's made in 2020 about, you know. Come COVID. on, Rebecca, tie it they, together. They, they like what she's doing right now against Meg Thee Stallion. They love it because we're going to go love there because we're going to mm. go before we get off this channel on, tonight, child, today, this listen. morning. We're going to have to touch we were on that. We're the Holy Spirit, national relations, okay. and hip -hop, trap music in the same episode. Let the Lord lead you, Rebecca. Now, what I do that in the world else, and if you guys are watching right now, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And I'm talking about tip your host as we go because we ain't dropping nothing but gems. All right, we ain't dropping nothing it, but gems. And don't and, use and, my cash app. Mine got my cash app got closed. So. And uh, well, ooh. I know. And Ben know, Shapiro right? <laughs> is dropping the chat where they can um 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 support you. But Ben Shapiro is is literally bragging about making money using Take our hmm. culture. And saying that y'all gonna support him regardless. This is what I'm talking about. When it's white, it's right. That's mm -hmm. right. But Rebecca, yeah. I would, I would like to. No, go ahead, James, because you've been, you been trying to say. This. No, I'm gonna ask this question. When was that released? Yesterday. Please tell me that's old. Yesterday, they already at what? Oh, no, number one on iTunes. Okay. Well, thankfully, thankfully, Meg cleared both of it. Cleared all Meg, everybody Meg out up, late. Meg up on number one. Meg and Justin did. Timberlake and Justin Timberlake, and I'm happy with that. So, but yeah, Meg has cleared everything out, especially with everything. That's well, going I want to make a recommendation. Oh, here. I, I want to make a recommendation. Mm. Um, I want to thank Ben Shapiro for giving me an excuse to drop a couple of bars and do a video, uh, rapping. Because did you rap uh, too? Man? Did you? I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to, and I'm gonna respond to this cracker. <laughs> Y'all better make Ben. I'm, I'm gonna respond to this okay. white supremacist devil. And y'all better make Ben number one. That's all I'm saying. But we go, we're gonna piece it together and, and do it right. And y'all gonna the audience, y'all gonna help support me do it. So that's we're gonna do it, and we're gonna respond mm -hmm. with some fire. But go ahead, go ahead, Rebecca. What yeah. else we got? No, so yeah. I see all that to say we have Ben Shapiro doing this. This, this, this. It's the perfect example of what we've been talking about because it all ties together. Like we can be doing whatever. We might have we might drop bars just to get y'all attention uh, uh, for, for some issue that's happening and y'all won't give a damn about it. Ben Shapiro could type the whitest person out of the crevices of Nowheresville <laughs> that white folks don't know, but he can tap that person who has the blackest aesthetic, right. but because the person is, is, is white, it's right. So let's mm -hmm. utilize this person. Let's rap and say, this is not about money, cars, and clothes. Yeah, I'm gonna, y'all know I'm taking all your money. You guys give me views regardless. And this is gonna go number one because I'm Ben Shapiro. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There is nothing else. I'm Ben Shapiro. And if you know what Ben Shapiro talks about, he sat on that, he sat there um, and discussed how um, issues like uh, George Floyd, he sat there and stated and, and said things that were untrue. About that George he didn't Floyd. die Talked from, about how from we the knee were, on the neck. How we were protesting, and we were the ones that were the 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 opposition that was um, scary right. and should have. They needed to have the tanks out. I never forget these conversations that he sat there and had, and then talked about when those shootings happened, and it was targeting black people. We were just going to the grocery store. Oh, he said we shouldn't focus on the race. Oh, we shouldn't mm. focus on those things. Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, well, let's look more deeper into what he did. I mean, he's just there's a kid. nothing that white people, uh, there's nothing that an angry white man can't do that they won't justify, that they won't explain. He literally got upset about B Black Panther. Remember? Oh, yeah. He was so mad about that. Was our most viral video just because we mentioned and name dropped Ben Shapiro. Mm. Mm. So, real quick, y'all, the record label, and shout out to Industrial Arts for saying this the record label is Daily Wire. Yeah. Is in that a, that's a, a, a right that's wing? That's Ben Shapiro's right mm. wing media company, and it's just a it's just a money grab because they know they could literally put out feces, a very specific mm. type of feces, by the way, Neanderthal feces. Terrible. They they can put out Neanderthal feces and and make America great again. Will make them rich over it. They just they buy this Neanderthal feces from them and they gobble it up and they make everyone rich on the right wing. So yes, Daily Wire is Ben Shapiro's company, and this is just another way that they co-op blackness. And as they digest this blackness, what comes out is their Neanderthal feces that they feed each other and make millions of dollars off of. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. They do. Is that reverse <laughs> no, no, racism? <laughs> Uh, is it because remember? Oh, and, and and I want you to go to that clip for me about reverse racism that I, I had dropped um, in 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 our, in our what you call it? Because I want to talk about that, and then I want to go to um, I want to go to Nicki Minaj and um, talk about how that is problematic for our community. Let's take a listen to yeah, what, get out of my chat what this guy says. Maybe I misheard him, and maybe you guys can 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 listen can listen with us with Fredo Bangs, I believe. And Fredo, yeah, Fredo Bangs. Maybe Fredo Bangs. Fredo, Fredo. Let, let, yeah, let's listen. Maybe I misheard him. I've been doing let's that listen. lately. I believe that black people can't be racist. I, f- I, feel, like a, I feel like a lot of black uh, people think I that... I feel like a lot of them be racist. No, he's saying that he thinks black people are racist. Older. Yeah. Oh, older black people. Yeah, especially older ones. I feel like all of us just be doing some racist shit sometimes and so we just don't be noticing. Yeah. And I, it's just like, we're going, man, look at that white boy right there. He tripping, but that that statement was, you feel mm-hmm. me? Now, nah, if a white person would say, "Man, look at that black boy right there," yeah, we gonna we gonna feel away. You feel me? You have a point. We just, but we no, just we so don't. used to the shoe being on the other foot that we don't notice that what we're saying and doing. You feel me? We don't. Can you pause this for a mm-hmm. second. We don't put the. We don't make it equal. That's you don't believe that. What comes that? after when a what? when a white person says, "Man, look at that black boy over there," versus black people who say, "Hey, man, look at that white boy over there. He tripping." You notice he couldn't finish the sentence when white people say that because it usually follows a gun. It usually follows with lynching. And it murder. usually follows with a knee in the neck. We don't get, listen, mm-hmm. listen, black folks. I understand. Listen, just because you're brand new at thinking doesn't mean you have valid thoughts yet. Keep. Keep thinking a little bit longer before you get behind a podcast and mic. My God. I didn't think I, I wanted to be proven wrong. I said I didn't hear that correctly, but it said in my shana. Who is that? And I needed to, anyway? to just it needed to come out. Fred Obangs, I think he's a rapper. And here's my problem. I Baller Alert does very well with covering politics on their poly alert page. I like to see it because they're one of the pages that actually flesh out what's happening daily in the White so House. They, they, they have interviews that they'll post. They do that on poly alert. But when it comes to the Baller Alert page itself, which actually does a better job of fleshing out news than the Shade Room does, um, they actually give you what's going on. <laughs> they do. Um but in these, with their podcasts, I think they're getting it wrong. These conversations are very problematic for our community. I wish that there was somebody else that sat around them that was able to oppose or have a conversation to, like, yeah, like you, Benjamin. Oh, I'm going to wrap, wrap my way like into me. all of their conversations. Thank you, Ben Shapiro. Like, listen, and I hate this the second time in a row. I did it last Saturday where I, where I uh, pointed out what was problematic with the podcast that they were talking about with the uh, uh, the just the man saying how he did the women and the woman just sitting there and saying, yeah. oh, because you was a Sag. It's so Sagittarius of you. Let's start having nuanced conversations what? that make sense yeah. where we can spread it out and have difference of opinions. But it's understandable that you, you can't be this small minded when it comes to talking about race. Baby, you don't understand that when like like Benjamin Dixon said, when a white person says, look at that black boy over there, first of all, it's going to be full of diminishing. It's going to be full of... If we say, look at that white person over there, that yeah. means we're not going that way. We, we're not going to pass by that way. We're not. It's going to be some weird stuff happening over there. We want to make sure we're safe. It's too much white people over there. It's probably not going to be seasoned food. It's you know, we, that we'll say, that. look at that white boy over there can't dance, clapping on the two, <laughs> uh, on the one and three. What we're saying, yeah. Well, on the one and three. Look at that white girl singing. <laughs> they say, look at that black boy over there. Let's go get a rope. <sighs> Or look at look at like we're, like we're scared. Look at that boy over there. We're scared for our lives. Twelve year old Tamir Rice. Oh, listen, we could take it back. Oh my gosh, look at that white boy uh, coming in, and, and look at that black. Look at that. Look at that black boy over there coming in here, knowing he's a kid, speaking to that white lady, Emmett Till. Oh mm. Lord, my gosh. Look at that black boy over there playing, like you said, Ben, with a BB gun. With Tamir, with, mm, look at that! Mm, mm. Look at that! Bl- look at that black boy playing in the going to the wrong door just to go pick up. Oh my God! His siblings. What was my brother named? Mm. That young boy. He's alive. Thank God he survived. Look at right. look at look at that, look at um, that black boy Ahmad Arbery trying to take a jog in 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 Georgia. Get killed. Look at that black boy. To uh, uh um, so many names. There's just there's you can't. So many even, names. Look at look at that black boy who was my friend Corey Jones. Play drums mm-hmm. at church with me. Gets pulled over, mm-hmm. coming home from work, and gets killed. 
Like, I, I just really need this generation of, uh, and I, I love the young folks. Y'all y'all are cool. Like, I got gray hairs. I ain't trying to be young. I'm an old man. But I really need y'all to right. start thinking a little bit more past Uno, like past step one. At least have a second level of thought. These people are getting behind podcast microphones with their very first thought because they ain't never thought about nothing before. And then somebody come along and say, you know, that's really reverse racism. And dudes be like, oh, that's deep. That's deep. Nah, brother. You don't think that they like, oh, and then the girl had to come in and say, he's saying that. And they're like, oh, that's what he's saying. So you think, oh, folks. Hey, and then when 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 men be like this, they, they it's a real thought process. It's like, hey, yo, so you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't really think. And they're like, oh, wow. You didn't even think wow. about it. Because you say, you say it all the time. Look at that white boy over there. How many times has a black, how many times has a black person lynched a white person? Mm. How many times has a black and got away officer with it? killed and missed a out white? On jail How many times has a black and... officer gotten away with killing a white child? Hmm. Look at that black boy over there. Okay, let's talk about. And then we can't we can't deny that when these things. This is why I think it's problematic because everybody wants. And this is why I say media literacy is very important. Right. I am trained in this space. Ben, you're trained in this space, but but you've been around this space. Media mm -hmm. literacy is very important. Y'all just hop on these mics and just be saying nothing because again, it's very popular to do so. White folks are doing it; they're getting paid like nobody's business. But when black yep. people do it, it must be a conversation that is not doesn't. Just random black people are getting on just because this person is a rapper. Just, the interviewer is not doing the proper process to interview and pull out some questions or to make a conversation yeah. understandable and agreement to disagree type of situation. But they're getting on these mics and they're saying problematic points because that's the only way that our content will reach anywhere. If we're making problematic, dividing points mm -hmm. about each other and that's the only way our content will make oh will, and that will, will content by the way myron Gaines from uh fresh and fit he's so easily triggered that type of content gets so many views you can make a fortune off of it Let, let's just be real. like all of them yeah. are rich it's all of them are rich so i mean really who's the dumb ones we're out here we're out here working three four jobs you know calling for patrons yeah. but we haven't had to sell our souls so uh I, no we'll be okay over here We'll be okay. I, I'm ready to quit um to quit my nine to five where I'm selling my soul every day, but I'm willing to put in the work. Mm -hmm. it, uh, um, ooh, it was a good message that we'll play at the end of the show that's going to apply to this because we ain't gonna leave y'all like that. We're gonna leave y'all with a good word, but um that applies to us getting up and doing this because there's a reason why we're doing this. We're not just doing this just because we know what we're fighting Come up on. against. We know that there is a purpose for this. And if we're gonna be on the side of anything, and I know we had to go through it where we days that we wanted to quit, there were times where we didn't want to do Come it on. no more. There were times mm. where we were seeing another side of it, and we were like, Listen, I'd rather just go ahead and work for the white folks and not do this anymore. Do you talking about do what we yeah. do right here on this show. Happening. You're talking about the magic that we right mm -hmm. yes. mm. We weren't seeing anything happening, but we were still coming on and doing it until this day we are. The little support, the big support, whatever. But just to see other people get on and make problematic claims, uh, people get on mics and say nothing and get God knows what, don't have to work for the rest of their lives, for the rest of the year. It does hurt, but we're here for a reason, not just a season. We know that what we're here for is to counteract against Come a on. lot of what's happening. Come Amen. On. So, because some of these people need to wake up these brain cells, man, because a lot of these people on the other side of these microphones is just picking up a mic and just talking. What are y'all really talking was, about? But nothing I, at all. It's problematic. How do they smoke so much weed and still be so stupid, though? Like, because. You know, like, right. cause usually yeah. that stuff it makes a little bit it opens up a little more, you know when i had my back problem and i was using medicinal like it, it opened up my mind mm -hmm. how y'all smoke weed and getting on podcast mics and saying stuff this fusing. that's that's the problem ben that they not smoking they at all weed. clearly they not they just they drinking they just Girl. put in bottle doing something and i they, just want to point out why they, they drink a lean have y'all 
I'm like, you can't look. Why do y'all look our age? I'm not old, right? Bruh. 23 years old. But why y'all looking 40? Why y'all looking in your 30s? I remember when I was 20, I had a bad cut on my bang. My bangs was cut incorrectly. Okay. Like I didn't have any fillers. I didn't know there was I didn't have any body. I was just a straight up and down rectangle, pencil-shaped girl. Um, you know, and I was going through what I needed to go through. But I'm looking at these kids today. I said, Oh, nah, I don't like to see. I yeah. like that we're in an era that the kids have gone through so much or put not even gone through so much. They're going through less, but they're putting themselves through so much. So and they're somebody, getting on mics and complaining about things that they have not educated themselves and, on. And they ain't even been through none of the shit that they're talking and, about. And if they've been through anything, it's stuff they put them through. Now, listen, I'm okay. Now, I, I want to make one distinction. There is trauma. There is legacies of uh, generational curses. There's all kinds of stuff that these young folks are going through that I don't want us to, to people to mistake and say and we neglect that. We know Generation right. Z and the young folks Y'all got some unique challenges that our generation did not have. But as it pertains to a struggle and you're talking about and and, and this brother put his face back on the video because I want to make sure everybody knows exactly who I'm talking to. Because if I get a chance to say to him in the face, I I say it in bars like, you know, like like, I just want him to understand as you attack old people. David, please put that 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 rapper back on the screen as he calls out black people and old black people as being racist. The level of ignorance that is to undermine the very people who gave you the ability to get where you are right now is the most it, it is the most backwards and downright self-destructive. It is culturally suicidal. You are targeting the very people that got you on that little raggedy podcast microphone you talk about. Hmm. Period. Hmm. That's it. Now, there is no boomer era for me, baby. That that is that is there's no boomer era for me. It's always going to be millennial, and millennials are literally considered. That's what they're they're telling us. We're considered um, old. I'm 33 years old, right? I feel like I'm in my grown and sexy era. I don't want nobody to take that away from me, and I don't like that the Generation Z feels like they have to be a. They're aging themselves. We shouldn't be wearing the same clothes. We shouldn't be like. I want you to enjoy your life. You shouldn't be <laughs> drinking the amount that you guys are drinking every single day. Like it's just crazy. Like enjoy your life. But then again, the things that um, the benefits that they do have with the internet, the outside kind of is not intriguing to them. Mm. Like it's, mm. it's I don't know if it's the outside not intriguing to them. I, I just don't think they were guided. Mm. It's just they just they oh. just seem mis so oh. misguided. It's just Florida has decided so to misguided. Florida has <laughs> recently decided to go ahead and <clears throat> cap the social media for I think up to 16 year olds. Mm -hmm. Um you can't use social media. So they're trying to pass that law or I believe that they passed it or something like that. Um, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. what do you guys think about I, that? So wait. Because so, a lot of kids are making money. I, I just told you. So many people <laughs> utilize the, uh, social media to make money. So even our, our, the kids, a lot of them I know have decided not to go to school because they've made enough what my salary is at work on month. social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you mm -hmm. know, uh, here, here's the thing I've seen how since 2020, since we're in remembrance, I've seen how we were able to use social media in 2020 to galvanize the resistance, the revolution, the, the, the march for lives, black lives, the march for George Floyd. We were able to organize via social media. I've also seen since then they, them targeting and using social media to suppress our voices. So when you talk about the state of Florida, you know, restricting kids' ability to get on it. To me, I, I feel like it's an extension of them controlling the power of social media and our ability to yeah. organize with each other because the biggest threat to this power structure is the youngest generation, with the exception of those 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 people like Fredo, Fredo, Fredo Lays, what's his name? Like, whatever, whatever. <laughs> it was an exception of people like that who get on there and use social media for stupid stuff. Lays. Like when you get out there and say something stupid, then you undermine everything that we that we could do positively. But I've seen them use face. The police agencies in this country can call Facebook and have them cut off our streams. Now, that came as mm -hmm. a result of George Floyd, right? They have a way to neutralize everybody's ability to go live. So if you're at a protest and you go live, they have ability to, to just like you think you're streaming to your whole audience, you're streaming to three people. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you when you look at it right. in that context, it makes me fearful for what their true intention is by uh, uh, not allowing young people to get on social media. 
Yeah. So yeah. So there's there's a there, it is a problematic area, especially when um social media is kind of they're learning where they're learning at. I think it's 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 the a lot of the social media sites that have not done a great job in creating safe spaces for Kids. the children, mm -hmm. and that's where I think the problem is because there was a time where you had to be a certain age when we grew like when we were growing up to get on any kind of social media you had to be a certain of a certain age or you had to have an email criteria had to be met now kids can do whatever the 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 content comes to them on their page you, it, it may say oh i'm a 13 year old or whatever but i can see on my nephew's phone the same content that comes comes across my tiktok is coming across his tiktok why is he seeing people doing get ready get ready with me's and their thongs and their whatever like those those should not be what our children oh. Are watching um, and then emulating my niece who had just turned ten. Um, she was with me. I was looking at her TikTok. She's showing me women in bustiers and and all the stuff and telling me I want to get that outfit. Girl, you can't. You still got breast milk on your tongue, baby. <laughs> now, now some of that does come from the parents. They had to monitor what these kids looking at, and I and I'm glad my brother is one of Talk those. I have a younger niece, two younger nieces. He monitors everything they're doing and puts stuff on their phone. Like, okay, no, nah, you it's certain content you will not be able to see. But there is that algorithm, yes, though. Becca, okay, yes, you're sir. right, where you're going to get through some of that stuff and where, as a parent, you can't be on your phone, your child's phone, and seeing what they're doing no, all the time. Can. And I've heard horror stories about some, some stuff that they that's been found on 10 year old uh, 11 year old phone the two kids out here at my house hearing what they talking about and seeing some of the stuff I'm like no that's not gonna fly yeah, man yeah you young people might not care but i care J so no it's, it's yeah. gotta change it's okay to parent it, it's not it's it not, is it's mm -hmm. okay to parent i'm not a parent yet but i do understand why my parents did what they did and it's their first yes. time being parents of, of, of five kids and doing what they need to do but i understand why they wanted to because uh um, um restrict us from certain things and that's okay why we couldn't wear certain things and because there was going to be a time where we were able to make those decisions ourselves there was going to be a time where we were able to dress ourselves in these manners uh as a child i don't understand why a 13 year old and nene leaks are wearing the come same on. outfit. Come on. Same. And that's not just come some on, social man. media phenomenon, James. That goes exactly what you're saying. There ain't, so there's a lot of parents ain't parenting out here. There's a lot of kids growing up without any Child. guidance. There's a lot, you could see it as it, you could see it as they talk on these podcast microphones that they have come to the conclusions by doing their own research and not having anybody mm -hmm. guide them through actual parts mm -hmm. of life. And and and, and Rebecca, mm -hmm. like I, I agree. I, I got kids, I just really I really directly make it clear to them to help them understand that there's stuff on the internet that is designed to catch you, hold you, and extract everything it can for you from the rest of your life, from sexual mm. content to violent content. There's everything that you could imagine horrible. It's there ready for you. I can't be around you the whole time, but you got to be able to see it for yourself. What is the thing that yeah. I'm watching and what is this thing that I'm watching doing to myself? Because I can't be around them all day. I can't. They're going to get yeah. them. They're going to see right. some of it and they need to be able to, to analyze it. And you know what I also said on uh, uh, the other day? I said, hey, guys, I know that in the past we were tiptoeing around, hey, um, we can't judge. You know, we can't say what people can wear. And, um, you know, gentle parenting. And if you choose to... Uh, we have to really that's that hurt we did it and we it, it didn't do nothing for us mm. it it just caused a lot of problematic things um it caused us to be a little bit very sensitive to trying to have conversations um and 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 be okay to disagree with things um here's my thing about that we need to be able to judge. We need to be able to, and, and do it in a way that makes sense. Not, we not that she be judged what the Bible said, but I understand what you're saying. I, I hear you. We need to be able to be on the right side of things. And I yeah. know that just because a child literally is crying and saying, I'm not free, I'm not, I don't feel free, I don't do whatever, because you're trying to protect them from things. Listen, that's all right. You'd be, you'd be that child can it, pull bro. out the phone and try to record you as a bad parent or whatever because you didn't let them go to a party. It's okay. You're going to have to parent the way you're going to have to parent in these days and age because you don't want your child being susceptible to alcohol at this this age. This woman I, I, I saw, she was giving, she was smoke. This, this story came out. A woman was smoking with her daughter early on 
because she didn't want her daughter to go and smoke out because it was just it, it was everywhere. So she started smoking with her daughter, I think, since at the age of 12 or whatever the case may be. Ooh. And the daughter started now thought, OK, I smoke with my mom, so my mom won't get mad if I tried these other drugs. And it started getting crazier because the daughter went to go smoke outside with friends because she smoked with her mom. Her mom didn't want her to smoke outside anything laced or whatever. The daughter never said she wanted to try it. She, the mom just got her onto it early because wow. of what the world was like. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 12 is it, certainly too old for that stuff. Yeah. yeah. 16 is a, <laughs> uh, let your kids be kids, y'all. Let them, let them, there, there is, there's one thing that guides how I raise my kids in conjunction with my wife. Um, first of all, y'all know my kids got to be smart around us. They know too many things that are happening in the world. They kind of do know how bad the world really is. We emphasize them being kids and having fun and playing and staying kids as long as they can. Don't try to process all these heavy things that are in the world. Simultaneously, don't expose yourself to all of this filth that's on the internet that's designed to mess you up sexually, mess you up emotionally. They got stuff on the internet just to trigger you, like like, like to, to, to trigger your visceral reaction with patterns and this nasty looking stuff that would be in your head for weeks at a time. Be a child and avoid these things on the internet like you would a white van in your, in your neighborhood. There was a video that I saw, you guys, and I didn't know how to feel about it, of a woman teaching her daughter how to... It was so weird. Look at every man. And it sucks that we have to be in that time, though, because but look at every man and tell them, like, look, look at every boy or man like women are better than you and women are this and that. And you and I was like, I don't know if that's the message that we should be giving our little girls mm. when it's talking about equal rights for women or whatever. Your child is a child. She wants to go in the sandbox. Right. Teacher, nobody touches my private. You don't touch anybody. Like we got simple things to talk about because they're learning this world, right? To protect each other. But to tell a little boy that a woman's going to be better than when this, they just want to play in the sandbox. Mm. <laughs> they just want to throw around a ball. They just want to like, like, but she was actively teaching her um, these anti-men like rhetoric. So I didn't like funny it. how we are on the diametrically opposed sides of this particular nuance, Rebecca, because I cannot stand the reality of our young boys right now being taught that women are whores and that women... So yeah, like, like I don't they, like they, they, they really are in this thing where because they can't get girlfriends, they act out violently towards them and then they demean them. Like that's the entire branding of the manosphere. Oh Andrew my gosh. Tate. That's the uh cobra. That's all of them. That's mm -hmm. that's the modern. They don't even be fine men. I had this argument with somebody the other day. Like, hey, yeah, like mm. you think just because you could be, he could be watching whatever, but you think just because you're African, it makes it fine for you to treat people in Atlanta a type of way because Child. women have this, this idea that dating an African, I said, no, 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 no. Whatever that, that, because of the social media logic, oh, getting you an African, we all dating the same African. It's not the thing. It's not for me. It's not the thing over here. It doesn't make sense. Like just because you're a man and you're an African man and because it's a popular thing to date that type of man right now does not mean that y'all can go around and treat women a certain type of way no way mm -hmm. hell no and the boys that grow grow up to be this no we're not, not, not no. No. so I no, think no, we rebuke that spirit as well we, amen exactly we're not teaching men to be this type of way and we shouldn't actively be teaching uh little girls Agreed. to be like that to men either we gotta let me tell you the world that we actually live in isn't that but the world that we're trying to protect our kids from, that's what we're, that, that's what we be trying. And then it gets crazy. This is where it all gets mumbled and jumbled right here because now we're, we're, we're thinking that we're teaching the kids one thing, but they're getting out and they're like, women, yes. women, yeah. women. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's not what we meant. We're just, and it gets crazy, but we need to, we're, Social media has really created this real place for us where we it don't really know, has. like it's teaching the kids. The the guy that you said, Andrew Tate or whatever, a child, uh, uh, he was doing a video and a, a kid came up to him and said, he said, F women. Oh, no, you're talking about Sneeko. Oh, <laughs> cuckoo. Yeah, Sneeko. Well, well, maybe I don't know if you're talking about. Uh, 
maybe Andrew Tate ha- that might have happened with Andrew Tate, the one who's in trouble with the Romanian courts for uh yeah, there was a, well, no, so it wasn't it's him, not the mixed guy. It was somebody else. It was a yeah, video, yeah. He had those young boys who came around him and said mm-hmm. F women and and uh we need you to see, and the, the kids are being taught from them, and it's like the parents are trying to parent, so that's where I say, is it okay? For maybe the parents to continue running their child's social media up until a certain time, because these kids having the freedom to it, they're being taught outside of what the household is teaching them. And I'm not saying trying to mm, indoctrinate yeah, them with mm. them, but if it's simple things like, hey, you know, we don't speak like that around grown folks. We don't, we don't, those are simple things that are okay. You can't watch this type of content. It's not age appropriate. That's okay to say. That. And that's not yeah. infringing on their freedoms. It's actually protecting their later freedoms. If you let your children mm-hmm. get caught up in everything, the internet wants them to get caught up right now. They don't got no future. You already, mm-hmm. You've already mm-hmm. killed that future. Uh, so you have to yeah. protect them now so that they can be free in the future. That, that's my take on it. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. yeah so- and I know y'all seen that the little black boy. Uh, I know he no older than seven or eight years old rapping, saying yeah. every single customer in the book. Then talking about smacking girls on the uh on the be- behind, calling them all kind of bees and whores. Viral videos viral. like this. Viral. Are <laughs> Excuse me. And, and, and it's just like, and the kid, they're looking at this stuff and they're gonna mimic it. They they can seem like it's okay to do this. What the hell are your parents at? Allowing you to be on on, on go viral and do twerking this stuff. With them. They <laughs> think it's so funny. They twerking with them. <laughs> Okay, well, and no. granted, now the little boy got bars. He can rap, but come on. The the, 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 it's really crazy what I'm seeing online. You see, even the grown-ups. Who? Mm. What are we doing They're, right We're now? sexually traumatized people, traumatizing generation after generation after generation. And I, mm. I, I'm... And then now we're doing it so quick. We can do it. It can't be one person now that like back in the day where you had to. No, we're doing mm-hmm. it by millions. My video has gone mm-hmm. viral. Now the my trauma is now on you. And it's funny because people are laughing about it in the comment section. But I'm saying that poor child thinks that this is OK at the age of five to have a 35 year old, 40 year old tw- twerking right. on them. Or to have a five year old at a dance company. Come on. Wanting to listen to Sexy Red and throw their legs in the air. Nah, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus no. as well. White supremacy is a threat to us, but that that strand of abandonment. Listen, I'm not saying, listen, I like Meg Thee Stallion. I, she's a wonderful lyricist. So you're not going to see me say, you know, oh, you got all this twerking is, I'm not Ben Shapiro. You know, WAP didn't bother me. But however, you think I'm going to let somebody in my household who's underneath the age of about 15, that's what I'm what? saying. What? Age appropriate. Right. Age appropriate. When you are now of age, okay, let's have like let's do it. Let's make it make sense. I had to be. I literally had to wait until I got to college to experience a lot of things, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. After mm-hmm. college, that's why I say even in my 30s, I'm in this place where I can be grown and sexy. I thought I was sexy in my 20s. I was small. I was whatever. Finally got a little bit of booty. I'm out here. I'm gonna show it because I'm grown and I can do so. I'm gonna have me a drink, and it's gonna be a living drop. Yes, I yeah. am. Come on, I'm gonna girl. have me a good old time. I'm going to do more than two-step because I don't come from the generation of two-step. I come from the generation of throwing that in a circle. And that's what I'm going to do when I go out because I'm Come grown. on. <laughs> wait, how old are you grown? To be able to do that. <laughs> so I don't need to be there and a little girl who's in her 20s looking just like me. And I'm like, hold on. I don't understand. No, it, she, she's here in the club with me. And, and I don't go to the club. She's here at the lounge with me, and all she's doing is taking pictures. And my, my, we already took our photos in the car. We already met, did our selfies at the wall. This is time to dance. I don't want that. I don't want mm. that. Go get your twenties. <laughs> go get your twenty-year-old life and go enjoy. I, I want to. I, I listen real quick. There's a couple questions that popped up in the chat room that I think are really important for us to answer and to answer in context of the Paula White video, David. So if you want to cue that up, there's a couple. Number one, uh, uh, Vite, Vitingale gives this caution, and I agree. Um, people will use similar gatekeeping arguments around keeping knowledge from youth around things like gender affirming care. We need to stop infantilizing young people, teach them your values, but agency is essential. I agree with that statement 100 percent, but it's important that we learn how to discern the difference, which was another chat go- conversation going on. I forgot who asked the question in the chat, but they asked, uh, what is discernment? Because if I'm not mistaken, another person in the chat room was like, we have to learn how to discern. 
Here's the thing, y'all. There's a difference between discerning gatekeeping and protecting your kids from what we all know is absolutely just a cesspool of nasty old men particular who are waiting to recruit your children into the next season of their of their sexual proclivities does that make sense? Mm -hmm. like every year a, you said it, it's moving faster and faster rebecca you were talking about that 20 year old who might be at the lounge with you if you ever come across a, a social media feed of these kids at their proms at their doggone uh at middle school dances you see they have accelerated this thing so quickly that it's in middle school now it's you know you got girls in in, in in elementary school who are trying to achieve the look of grown behind bbls they're yes. waist cinching Gary. your camera um yeah. but they're waist cinching they're doing all of this stuff and i hate it i i want us to and, and and maybe I didn't know if we would ever get to this stage in our lives, but I do want us to be more body positive. We've actually moved from body positive and we're saying that um that this one look is the way. I went I went on a page the other day. Even um a hierarchy uh with capitalism, like black women have a page called luxurious black women. And mind you, you can find your space everywhere. There's a, there's a place for everybody in their thinking, my camera as well. There's a place for everybody in their thinking, but I believe that there should be some gatekeeping. I really do. Y'all can fight me on that if y'all want to, but there should be some gatekeeping, like somebody should have gatekeep. Yeah, yeah, gatekept. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what word. Somebody should have did that with Nicki Minaj. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and. I mean the 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 the, the victims, right? Because let's think about it, right? There as many victims as there are of religious indoctrination is trying to control every facet of a young person's life and sexuality. Like that does go too far. And you have an entire generation of young people who have been traumatized by religion, by control, you know, by not allowing them to be who they are, those mm -hmm. kind of things. But on the other side, you have a long list of people who have been sexually assaulted and traumatized. And I don't have to tell nobody this, like most people on this planet in this country have been sexually assaulted in some form or fashion because that's just how sick and twisted our society is when it comes yep. to this type of very sensitive topic but if we don't have the spirit of discernment and be able to really determine what we should and should not allow our kids to be exposed to and the conversations we should and should not and, and have with them like to educate them about these dangers that are out there then we're just throwing our kids out to the wolves and there are plenty of old men who are waiting for the chance to get their hands on the next batch of children. And it's always so much younger. It was, it was high school at first. Now they got the little elementary kid. I mean, middle school, like eight, nine, 10 year olds dressing like adults that, yeah. that, that turn on these old folks who, who, and not just old, like they're just twisted all around. And the young, but there, there are women out here. I've never seen so many women go to jail for, touching on these little boys or whatever the case may be because they're treating these little boys who look so grown at their age and I don't like it. I don't like it. I've seen a lot of these women, their mug shots for touching on these little boys, for sexually assaulting these little boys, middle school boys or whatever the case may be. So it's all yes. around. And I, and you know, I'm saying protect your yes, child. Sir. Okay. Social media gatekeep, do yes. what you need to do. Protect your child. Our world is moving differently. Now this thing in our hands is can be very problematic to our children on their psyche, mm. right? We talk about bullying, literally murders. They're watching the kids and seeing where they're going because the kids are putting up so it's much amazing. content. They know where the kids are gonna be, how they're gonna be. They're looking at mm -hmm. addresses. They're looking at credit card numbers. They look. This is very problematic for a child. Adults are having a hard time dealing with it. So why put it in the hands of children so freely? So it needs to be. I don't, I, I, however many, I, I want to follow your lead, Rebecca. I know we're coming up at the end, but I, I do want to, and I don't know, maybe I'm just being petty and messy, but I think another way of discernment is d discerning the difference between what these white Christian nationalists are using religion for. And we've been talking about a lot of this stuff. We talked about speaking in tongues today, all that kind of stuff. But like all of us on this screen, we're all religious folks in our own way, form, form or fashion. And the way we intersect with our religion and our faith and our relationship with God is not one of attacking other people's right to be like, go and be great and be who you are. Mm. Like we have our faith. I want y'all to be able to discern the difference between what we do and what we talk about and Paula White's 
and the white supremacist Christian nationalism that's that's gathering everybody at the border, ready for a second civil war, right? That's behind a lot of it's, it's it's a whole lot of stuff. You do need the spirit of discernment, but let's start first by being able to discern what these 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 religious devils are really doing in this moment, which is using Christianity to justify all kinds of abuse. Racial abuse, as well as emotional abuse. Take a look at this clip, Paul White. On behalf of Donald Trump, no less. And strike 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 until you have victory for every enemy that is aligned against you. Let there be that we would strike the ground for you will give us victory, God. I hear a sound of abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of shouting and singing. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory the lord says it is done the yes. lord says it is done the lord says it is done for i hear victory 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 in the quarters of heaven in the quarters of heaven victory 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 for <laughs> angels are being released right now angels are being dispatched right now hamanda aka ata raka teda baka sanda ata ambo osa kata rite eke banda ata rike the guy in the back is taking me out Angels have even descended <laughs> from Africa right now. Africa, Africa right now. Africa right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here. In the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. 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 They're from Africa. Donald from South because they're America. taking a shot. That's how they come here. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic reinforcement. Fika hata anda ata. Ora bata rata anda ek ek manda rasata. For I hear the sound of victory. Please, I feel like it's, it's casting right, spell. Right. Get it out of here. Witchery. Witchcraft. Let's get to the Greek alphabet. <laughs> oh, oh, my wife said the same thing, bro. <laughs> no, she was giving me um, a tag and pizza. I'm like, it's the pizza. Now, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can go give us a, I want to give us a quick covering real quick because like, I don't, I don't, if y'all mess around with me, I'll be speaking in tongues for real. All right, so I ain't gonna, I ain't mocking speaking in tongues. Something totally different. I don't talk about it on this platform. My show, you come to church and hear me talk about it. Wow. So I ain't mocking the fact that she's trying to speak in tongues. I yeah. am laughing, James, at you because my wife said the same thing. Sound like she's going through the Greek alphabet. But she's doing this on behalf of Donald Trump. You're, now. you're, you're. Oh, I got another battery. But let me finish. They, they, she's doing this on behalf of Donald Trump. Number one, number two, she has already co-opted the black church mm. in her style, her form, everything. Mm. But number three, she's literally trying to co-opt African angels to come and help Donald Trump. Talk about taking something black, regurgitating it into something that's a African. lesser form, and then using it against us. While I change this battery. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, no, that's exactly what she, she was doing. And mind you, this is not from this year. I think this was from 2020 as well, Ben, 2021. Um, but this is what they do. And I don't I don't appreciate it. I feel like it's witchcraft three. I thought it was then. But this this also to me uh gives the effect of Nancy Pelosi and the Kinte cloth. What they'll try to do is utilize like the and this is for the Republicans and, and, and crew, they'll try to utilize um the spirit and tap on black countries. Yeah. Why is she specifically saying angels in Africa pulling up? Why? And that's just to make sure that they they're they're gravitating and they're grabbing uh um uh the black audience who is the right and, and things like that. This is their diversity and inclusion in the tongues. But I don't I don't like it. I don't like that she she sat here and did this and and did it for Donald Trump. They're worried about um Arian Simone and the Fearless Fund. Come on. And how that, how saying that she, there can be no, um, hmm. what was it? No contract in race or right, something right, like right. that. There can be any, any race based but, contract. So why are we allowing in the church? It, wasn't there a time where there was no politics and church and all those stuff type of things, but all of a sudden under Donald Trump, we've been seeing, I mean, and it's never been that way. It's always been politics and church. We've always seen our politicians and people running for stuff, showing hmm. up the church, why they campaign and all this other stuff. But we I've never seen more than I've seen with the evangelicals in this day of our Lord and Savior 2024 up until now. Like, I've never seen so much that were able to hit mm, at all the pulpit mm. 
the the worst after literally inciting a riot, <laughs> after having people carry torches in the name of Donald Trump, after giving Come misinformation on. that caused people to get sick, caused nurses to get beat up, that has been accused of so much sexual assault. Come on, somebody. Here. That they've done treason allegedly. Oh my that god, really, <laughs> come on now. We're talking about the, the they've allowed and they're caping and they're going up and speaking in tongues and calling mm -hmm. angels of Africa that will not be moved. Come on, to come and cover this monstrosity, this, this dancing mm -hmm. that they're doing, demonic presence. The, 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 and that's how you should know you shouldn't be supporting those types of churches, those types of cults. How are you gonna co op black? praise tra traditions and rituals that are rooted in the black tradition that were born mm -hmm. out of the oppression that your ancestors placed on us. The reason we had to get a black church in the first place because y'all wouldn't let us worship with y'all, which is fine because we didn't want to clap on the on the one and three anyway. We want to clap mm -hmm. on two and four. So it's fine. We didn't want to worship with y'all anyway. She was off people with that. But we <laughs> had to start a black church because of that. And then they take, and you put the video back up, David, of all the praise, dancing and shouting like that, straight taken from the black tradition. And now they're wielding it against blackness and no, they're baby, the same so people who are justifying the second <laughs> civil war at the border where 25, 25 Republican governors yesterday, today, it's happening right now, sent their National Guard troops to have a confrontation with Joe Biden and the federal agents. They're being justified by folks who are going to be in church like this tomorrow. White folks are going to be in church like this tomorrow. Uh-huh, they are. And it's going to be more and more like this under, yes, under the name yeah. of Donald Trump. And they're going to be supporting it. And people are yeah. going to be sitting there and falling out in what they call the Holy Spirit. Like Kim Burrell said, though, you know, when she was singing, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit was only working in her favor. That's what these white folks were thinking. And they're falling out in this false day in the flesh. They ain't in no spirit. OK, anywho, there's so much that we can go on. But I and I would love to talk about Nicki Minaj and Meg Thee Stallion, but we don't have the time. What I do want to I'm not going to leave you with that because I also want to talk about Kim Burrell telling that lady to be quiet while she was singing. Thank you, Lord. And saying that the spirit was they can only function in the spirit must have been the song that, that was mentioned just for her. Oh, but Lord. When, when, we're not going into that. When did and the song was saying, that's why I think thank you, Lord, the other day, because okay. I'm like, because Kim Burrell was singing. Thank you, Lord. And. The woman was that is a congregational song, right. and somebody's always going to be singing it in the congregation when you're leading it on the mic. God is moving in the place, and that's what be happening. But we're not going to talk about that. That's something else for another day. Um, look, even the black church got it got its got its issues. Um, mm. we're not going to leave you with that though. We're going to leave you with something great. I need you to grab that video for me of Tabitha. Um, oh, Tabitha, yeah. and this will be our word for the day. Um, everybody on the show and everybody who's watching, take a listen. For your week. You preach today, today Rebecca, Rebecca, by, the by the way. Okay. I love that, honey. Y'all all right. So listen, real quick, I'm in here packing because I'm about to leave for New York tomorrow to get ready for my book tour. And I was sitting here, I was like, oh, Lord, I'm tired. But uh, mm. things still got to be done. Honey. I got to wash Donna. I got to finish uh, packing. I, mm. I got some reading I got to do. I got a couple things that still need to be done, even though I'm tired. And so God brought something back to me and he reminded me of all the years that I worked nine to fives and I worked for other people and I would work for them Ooh. tired. Right. He said that now when you work for yourself, you have to give yourself the same kind of energy and more, you know, to get to your dreams, to, to accomplish the goals, the things that you have, the desires of your heart. And so I want to remind somebody that I know that you're tired, mm -hmm. right? I know that mm. you're tired and you're working for somebody else. Hmm. You have a dream. You have these goals. You have these things inside of you. You have to be willing to still put a little bit of time in for you. If you're willing to put time in for somebody else and help somebody else with their goals and their dreams and, and their wealth, you got to be willing to pour that same kind of energy into yourself. Okay? A little bit every day. But be consistent hmm. with how mm -hmm. you treat your dream. Be consistent with how you treat your goals. You matter too. Mm -hmm. Even though you're working with somebody else right now, it's temporary. Okay? Honey, your day is coming. Your dreams are coming. They will manifest. They will come out of you and be right in front of you. You will live inside of your dreams one day. Come on, but on. you got to keep doing the work, even if you're tired some days. I'm not saying not rest because you still need to rest. But when those days come where it's like, oh, I don't want to do it. Think I about love time how many oh my God. corporations and people you've mm. made wealthy because you showed up for them tired. 
show up for you the same way. Okay? Mm-hmm. If not mm-hmm. more, you deserve that. That's it. I love you, honey. I got to finish. Look, I got to finish. Even tired, I said I got to mm-hmm. do a video and let somebody know this. I don't know who it's for, but honey, mm-hmm. you got to give unto you the same way you do for them. All right? All, All right. right. That's it. All right. I'm going to go on and uh, finish up and y'all going about your business, honey. Tonight, have the most amazing night and tomorrow, mm-hmm. have a good day. But even if you can't have a good one, don't you dare go messing up nobody else's hands. Come on. <laughs> she said everything I needed. She said she said it all. I don't even have to end it. It's, it's over. That's it. Listen, I will hope that you take that into consideration that each and every one of us that you see before you here right now is doing that very thing. Tired. We're tired. We're fam- like Ben has a whole family. Uh, Bubba has 17 other jobs. Mm. Uh, I sit here and I work for something that does not, not for Bubba. That does not mirror. I do it. I'll tell you, it's Venmo, DJ X3C. Venmo, DJ X3C. Venmo, DJ X3C. And it doesn't sit well with my spirit. But if I can get up and get up for them and do what I need to do with them, I can get up and do what I need to do here on this show and any other thing that I'm working on as well. Your support definitely matters here for us to do what we need to do. So if you haven't already, get over to patreon.com forward slash like it or not, patreon.com forward slash like it or not. And if you want to be generous today and tip your host, because honey, we do need it. You can get over to cash app. Um, not for Bubba though. Bubba drop in the chat where they can follow you, where they can um, support. Venmo for, 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 for Bubba, Venmo DJ X3C, Venmo 3 DJ X3C. Uh, you can give to Ben at BPD 2018 on Cash App. Mm-hmm. Becca's voice mm-hmm. on Cash App. The other things are in my chat. J-Row like 49. Thank way. you, sir. Our Appreciate it. are up and working. And don't forget our producer. He goes to make sure walk the, he walks the dog every morning. And he also has a side job that y'all don't understand, going to deliver stuff to people and uh, putting himself at risk. He does what he yeah. needs to do as well. I'll, have, I'll let you guys read the cat, the uh, super chats in the meantime. We're going to put them on screen. Okay. All right. Super sticker. Thank you, Lisa. Mm-hmm. J Row 49. Thank you, sir. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. For sure. Thank you, Laura. I'm dealing with this exact problem with my student who is on the spectrum. Teachers are struggling with it. I definitely understand. Kids are coming in with attitudes and all these kind of things, and it's hard to function yeah. inside of the classroom. So more, I hope, you know, more patience to you, because I know you're doing this for, for your purpose as well. And shout out to uh, Latif and Shamara Jones. Oh, and Ooh, I got to catch my <laughs> I got a cash app from Amir. Uh, oh, sorry, Andy. Andy, what's up? It's been a minute. Thank you so oh, much for your cash oh, app. Let me go check my cash app. Oh, <laughs> I get over there, ain't nobody send me. <laughs> right. Look, look. Be, they be hilarious on um on, on uh, left is off you. I love the show. I love working with them. All right, so y'all. Thank y'all so like, much yeah, for tuning read, in um, again. Um, I can't uh, wait chats. to get off the I'll air so like I can go blow my nose. all up here just sitting there chilling and I'm like, yeah. Thank you guys. But I love y'all. Mean it, man. Thank y'all again for tuning in this morning. Make sure I mean, read it, read it, like it, read 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 it, the we cash app is definitely now. love Memo, your support. DJ X3C However or you PayPal. DJ exclusive at gmail.com uh, with three X, man. I so hey, I got an affirmation for y'all today that ties powerful. into what Tabitha said and what Rebecca said as well, too, man. This thing just ties all together. Your affirmation is I am going through a difficult time, but I am coming out stronger than before. I am going through a difficult time, but I am coming out stronger than before love y'all meet it man enjoy your saturday stay warm stay cool whatever you at whatever it is you need to do man love y'all meet it see y'all next week deuces you. everything that i see i want your high love and emotion endlessly i can't get over you you left your mark on me i want your high love and emotion Exactly who you could be. So just hold on, I'm going home.